Hey guys, Thomas Aarons here. Welcome back to Aarons Bassin. Today, I'm gonna to let you in on one of the secrets that helps me catch a ton of smallmouth on the Shenandoah River, Potomac River, any of those rocky places with current. Stay tuned for this. So, Ned Rig. Everyone fishes it, but I got a little secret. Power Ned Rig fishing. And there are a couple of reasons I like to do this. One, the efficiency. If I use a heavier Ned Rig, I can quickly go through the water column faster, move through current easier. With that heavier head, it's not gonna get swept down. So if I see an eddy out there, I can quickly pitch in there and keep my bait in the kill zone a lot longer. And then the bite detection is phenomenal. When that thing drops there, you're gonna feel it hit the bottom. And if it doesn't hit the bottom, set the hook, you have a fish. So all I put in there, let's talk about this, Ned Rig. Hey guys, Thomas Aarons here. Welcome back to Aarons Bassin. Today I have some quick tips for you to catch more fish on the Ned Rig. So, one of my favorite ways to catch Ned Rig fish on the Shenandoah, Potomac, places like that, is power Ned Rig fishing. Now, to do this, you're going to want to get a Ned Rig head that is weedless and heavy. Not a lot of companies make something like that. But one company I got turned on to was Nichols Lures. And they make these Magnum Ned Rig heads that, are, that have a nice jig hook on them and a good weed guard. Um, and so it's basically like a mini jig. And what's nice about this is the ones I like to throw are usually between 3 8 and a half ounce. And I know you guys are thinking that is insanely heavy. But there's some perks to that. Number one, when you're kayak fishing or, you're, or if you're in a boat and the current's really ripping through there, that bait's going to get to the bottom and it's going to get down there hard. That thing's not going to be drifting a lot, which means your bite detection is a lot better. As long as you keep contact with the ground with this bait, you're going to be able to feel it through every nook and cranny. And what's nice about that is when you flip it in there, on, let's say behind an eddy or, or a submerged log or something like that, if it doesn't hit bottom set the hook, you have something. So it's way more efficient in that regard. Uh, the second thing that I really like about this is breaking off. You don't do it as much when you have this heavier gear. Um, if you're fishing a Ned Rig on six pound test with an exposed hook or even a, you know, a hook that's weedless, you're gonna get it stuck underneath rocks and things like that. And if you're in a kayak or if, you know, if you're in a big boat, that's gonna break a lot more. What's nice is when you go with this heavier rig, you can upsize all of your tackle and that makes you, it makes it so much easier to rip that thing out of there and pull it out. And I've been fishing this comparatively with, with the regular Ned Rig for three or four years now. And I consistently outfish guys that I kayak and bass fish with. And I, and I really think it is because of, again, it's the efficiency. I can cast that thing out there, it gets straight to the bottom, I can work the bait in the area, and then I can get rid of it. I can move on to the next thing. It's not drifting with the current. And I'm not tying off as much, or tearing off as much. Now the final piece of it is power. When you have a bait caster and you're, ha you're throwing 12 to 14 pound line and you hit them, you have way more control of that animal. And when you're fishing out here on the Shenandoah or the Potomac and you catch, you know, let's say a two to three pounder, which is a really good one for around here, you don't get a lot of those bites. And so having the backbone to actually stick them and get them in is crucial. And, what's, and what I'm shocked about the most is that I, I still have a great ratio, uh, or sorry, a great ratio of, of quality of fish that I'm catching. Um, that's what was crazy to me is when you know the people I would take out, they're fishing this light little Ned rig, and you would immediately think that clearly they're going to get more bites, and, and maybe sometimes those may be true, but for the most part, it's about dead even. The biggest difference was I didn't tie, I didn't break off as nearly as much as they did, and which means I kept the bait in the zone longer. And I never broke off a big one. You know, I had clients that were constantly breaking fish off when they're throwing eight to six pound tests because they didn't check their line in between. With this thing, I could pull it out a lot easier. I could rip it out. And honestly, you know, one of the bigger ones I caught last year, it was stuck in a rock. But since I had, you know, more powerful equipment, I was able to pull on that a lot harder. So gear though wise, what do I like to use? I like to use a medium heavy bait casting rod with a six gear to ratio reel. 
doesn't matter the brand, whatever you're comfortable with. I use Phoenix and I use Dial Reels, but that's just my personal preference. Use whatever you want. Bait wise, put on your head rig. I like Z-Man and I like Berkeley Power Bait Max Scent. And then I just cut theirs down a little bit and I use that. Um, the key with this rig, the key with this whole setup is you need a bait casting rod that's semi light. So I say medium heavy, but there's one extra thing you gotta add to that. You want a extremely sensitive tip. The rod I have here has an extra fast action, and that is insanely crucial for this. It's like fishing a micro jig, basically, is, is what this is. It's a micro jig. Um, and so you want that very sensitive rod tip so you can pop it over, and, it, and it's for forgiving for the most part. So when you whack on them, you know, that thing is not a broomstick going over. Now, the last tip I have for you guys, with the nickels at least, to get more bites, and I, I, when I first started doing this, I was missing a lot, and that is because of the hook angle with the barb. When you get those littler smallmouth, this angle really does decrease your hookup percentage. So what I like to do is I just like to take that hook and just bend it out just a little bit. And then it works well. Yeah, and I, and I dare you guys to kind of try this the next time you get on the water. Um, you are going to be so thankful for this setup when you're out there in your kayak or you're in your boat and you hook a quality Shenandoah or Potomac River smallmouth and you have the gear to land him. I have caught so many, again, these last couple of years where it was really the line moves, I whack, they're in the bottom of the boat going crazy because they didn't know what the heck happened. There's no fight. They're just, they're in, in, the, in the rod box. They're right down there. So just something to keep in mind, guys. I hope that's healthy, helpful. Um, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to bring out content on a weekly basis. Uh, thanks for everything.